<laughs> I could answer some questions if you wanted me to ask. Answer them. I opened this show in October of 2004. And then I ran for 10 months at the Hudson Theater here. And then I was, there was two falls where I was going to open it off Broadway in New York. And then I just got overwhelmed because, you know, I'm a single mom and I have a daughter in school. And I just the whole idea of moving to New York and it was just overwhelming. So I didn't do it. So I did like three mini runs in New York. I did like three three week periods here and there in New York. And then in between, I, I did it for Sundays for a while at the Groundlings at 11 in the morning. And then, um, and then I've done it in Seattle and Austin and Chicago and just sort of here and there. And then now this. But I can't believe it's been that long, like almost three years. Has the content evolved? No, it hasn't. Once I locked it, it really was changing a lot over the summer before I opened it. Um, because my dad actually only died in, the, in, the, in, in March or something. And then I opened it in October. So it was only six months over that time. But then once I locked it, it was pretty much the same. Like every once in a while, I'll change just a word. Yes? How long did it take you to write? And what was your process? Did you go back and forth? Or did you write it all in one shot? This was the most I ever workshopped something. Like for years I workshopped this thing. Like really, like when I talk about in the show where I go to that conference for the Center for Inquiry where then the wire story gets picked up by my hometown paper, that was actually me doing this show up to that point. <laughs> like I was just doing the show forever. Like it took about three years. I mean for me that seemed like forever. Or like sometimes I would book like 12 Thursdays at the Knitting Factory and I would just go up there and do whatever notes I had. So it was a really long time. What are your thoughts on The Secret? I hate The Secret so much. <laughs> you know what is so funny about The Secret is that, um, you know when I do the Deepak Chopra chunk of this show, as I was doing it, before The Secret came out, I kept thinking, this is already so dated. I mean, who would think that the universe would like give them things just because they wanted them? <laughs> like, that just, I mean, it already seemed like Deepak Chopra was already so passe, like, you know, like a mainstream audience could never fall for that. And then The Secret comes out. <laughs> and it's just so, I mean, to me, it's so sad because it's so, it's, such, it's so indicative of an, a population that isn't really scientifically literate. Because they just say things that are scientific, and they're not scientific at all. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not this just in the preface. He goes in and talks about my show, but it's later in the book, like oh, page okay. 351. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody gets that. That's the whole thing. It makes me laugh about the God delusion, because you know it's this big bestseller. And people keep saying, wow, you're in the preface. And I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not just in the preface. <laughs> But I don't think everyone gets that far. <laughs> but anyway, I think people are like, OK, we get it, we get it. But um, yeah, I was really pleased and really honored that, you know, it's so funny because when I quoted Dawkins in my show, when the show opened, nobody, he wasn't like, he wasn't in the popular consciousness like he is now a little bit more. So, so and then he came to my show. And I gave him a ride to his hotel after the show. <laughs> and I was so excited that I was screaming at him the whole time. He told me later. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the search gone since you've uh, finished writing this? My search mm -hmm. in for God, you mean? For whatever's after that. Um, well, I just keep chewing on different questions. So I don't really, it's not like, I, I feel like I'm pretty settled on the God thing. Like, I don't really think I'll keep debating that, because that just seems, yeah. but I keep thinking about ethics. Like, to me, that's a really, interesting area that I didn't ever think of as thoroughly without God. Which, to me, I don't even know how you have ethics with God. If there is God, there is no ethics. It's like God told you this, and that's it. But without God, there's actually, it's a very complicated, so it's like Peter Singer and Daniel Dan, like just the idea of how we humans are supposed to behave. Like how, like we are violent and we are subversive. Like there's all kinds of things that's in our nature. And so anyway, I just find those things fascinating. <laughs> Again? <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> That's the last time? Yeah. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> yes, I'm going to. It's so funny. I like I really got into it and then I got overwhelmed by it. It's like I like it, and then the whole idea that people actually read it is very embarrassing to me. <laughs> the forum is too crazy. I know the forum, but people like the forum. 
But it is sort of like being in an auditorium with everyone yelling. <laughs> My favorite thing on the forum, I have this forum, is where people talk about their own stories. That who are you people anyway section. That's my favorite. Okay. What did your mother think of the show? Um, my mother said, um, my mother saw the show and she said, you're brilliant, but you're wrong. 